I'm Liz Jennings with Community Action of Skagit County, and we welcome you to the May 2023 Brunch and Learn with Community Action. Um, we have been doing these Brunch and Learns now since the beginning of 2022, and by brunch, for me, that means coffee. If you um, have a snack or a, a beverage of your choice, feel free. Um, this is a way to dive deep into a big community need look at some of the partnerships that are trying to address that need in Skagit County. And then um, we spend most of our time looking at community action of Skagit County's programs to address that need. So today's theme is on um, the issue of food security, nutrition, and anti-hunger programs here at Community Action. When we start these brunch and learns, um, I like to remind folks that we're going to use Community Action's website as a resource, and it's as a way to um, help train our own staff and community partners that when in doubt, go to our website, communityactionskagit.org, and you'll notice that the, the number one way, if you don't know um, where to start, the number one way to start finding something at Community Action is down at the bottom, and it's this phone number right here, and that'll get you connected to our resource center. We have um, front doors to our resource centers in Mount Vernon, Concrete, Anacortes is a new one, and in Burlington, we also are now calling our um, Energy and Vets Connect Center a resource center because they do many of the same things that our resource centers do, um, which is a lot of information and referral. Um, information and referral connecting to community action programs, connecting to partner programs. For today, you'll see over here on the left-hand side, I'm looking for, and right at the top is food resources. So I'm gonna come back to that um, a couple of times and when we start talking about specific programs. We are going to um, start today with some fabulous folks from Community Action. We actually have, um, looks like six folks on tap today. Uh, Stephanie Semero and Tara Rubel from our East County Resource Center and the meal program at the Concrete Community Center. Hannah Pope, who is a grant coordinator and helps um, connect people to our basic food program in partnership with DSHS. Wendy Dahlstead, our WIC program manager, and that, of course, is Women, Infant, and Children program. Madeline McGonigal from the Skagit Food Distribution Center, and Lori Burgerstock, um, who also works at the Food Distribution Center coordinating our Senior Food Box program. And um, if, if she's here, we might reach out at the end and also ask um, Mary Loriano from the Mount Vernon Manor to share some information about a partnership with the county to connect seniors to healthy foods through farmers markets. But I'm gonna to start today um, with uh, Stephanie and Tara. Thank you for joining us today. Can you say a wave and say hi to everyone? Hi oh, guys. and present hi, Stephanie. Well, we are so happy to have you here. And Tara, um, we put you and Stephanie first today to talk about our meal program in concrete because um, you're very busy this time of day preparing a meal for how many people? How many people do you see at the Concrete Community Center every day? Um, it changes every day. Every day it's different. And it's it ranges anywhere from 30 to 60 people, sometimes 70 people, sometimes 20 people. Um, it's it, you never know how much how many people you're serving every day. Wow, on, that sounds on, really challenging. Um, yeah. Tell us, uh, um, you, you start your day, you don't know how many people are going to show up for lunch. And this is a free lunch or by donation. Is that correct? Yes, it's based on somebody's ability to pay, but it is it's open to anybody and everybody. And we have the people from the bank and the seniors and the kids down the street and the people at the school and the dentist's office and everybody comes. People that are unhoused and yeah, they all come. But yeah, they, it's um, based on somebody's ability to pay and it's ran mostly on donations. And we so we don't know how many people come every day. We just... Yes. 
So, so today, um, it, it being a Wednesday, uh, I know that it's challenging not knowing how many people are going to show up. Um, many of these folks, this is their only nutritious meal of the day because of their circumstances. Um, and in addition to not knowing how many people you're going to serve, you don't always know what food you're going to be working with. Can you tell us a little bit about, I mean, this is not like a restaurant where you can plan ahead and purchase foods for specific types of meals. Can you just explain how you put together a menu? Where does it start? And, and then how do you come up with something that's going to be nutritious and delicious? So mostly because the meal program is ran on donations and it, and it relies a majority of its stuff on like the food banks and the food distribution center and food lifeline in to, to pretty much figure out what we're going to be having for lunch because we feed so many people. We, we have to reduce the amount of waste or food waste as much as possible. So we have to be able to make things that can be, then be turned into something else. Um, and you have to be able to use the little bits of whatever you have to make something grand. And um, so we've been having lots of, um, it's actually been a bit of a struggle. You know, you have to, you don't, even the stuff that you order, usually it's very rarely do you actually get what you, you know, or actually have what you thought you were going to be able to use. So you just have to kind of be able to improvise often. So, but, so what was the improv, improv today? Um, I don't know. I haven't even gotten in there to start making lunch yet. Okay, yesterday. What was the improv yesterday? Um, yesterday, well, the day yesterday, uh, what did we have yesterday? Oh, uh, we had, oh, ooh, the day before we had spaghetti that was amazing. That we used noodles from the food bank, hamburger from the food bank. We have bought the bell peppers, but um, yeah, we had pretty much all of the vegetables that were in the spaghetti, including the sauce, was from the food bank. So, and that's in partnership with the food bank and concrete. Um, from with the distribution center in Cedar Woolley. So the food um, distribution centers, um, Community Action Skagit Food Distribution Center, you, you, I, I'm going to try to explain it from my point of view and you tell me if this is right or not. So the Skagit Food Distribution Center um, works with partners in the um, food security system, like Food Lifeline, which is a yes, larger organization. Yes. And they have access to some foods. Um, so they kind of put out a men or like a list of like, these are the things we have. And you order them and cross your fingers that you get what you ordered, but sometimes you get things you didn't order and sometimes you don't get what you ordered. Is that correct? Yes. And that's yes. because of the food shortages that we're seeing nationwide and in Western Washington. Yes, we don't, it's yes, because we use that as our main um, our main source of food because we don't have, you know, we don't have a large funding pool. Um, yeah, so it's you, yes, that is correct. We, uh, we just kind of willy nilly it every day. No, I'm well, kidding. I'm, I'm going to um, turn to Stephanie. I'm looking at, we, we usually start these conversations around the community need, and I'm looking at some data here um, that, that shows that Food insecurity in Skagit County is around 11% of the population, which is much higher. Um, the Washington state average is 8.5% and the United States national average is 10.2%. And so 11% of people in Skagit County are food insecure. And we know that poverty hits harder in the rural and isolated areas of Skagit County. So we often refer to, um, your area of the world as upriver or East County. Can you just tell us a little bit about what some of the struggles are? What does poverty look like in East County? It, people not having proper transportation, not having adequate money and funds to get food. Um, I know that our food insecurity up here, the last time I heard was at like 87%. Whoa. So for the area. Um, and that's based on the school, school numbers and kids that receive um, free and reduced lunches. That has gone down a little bit and they're expecting it to go down a little bit more. 
So we know that the housing crisis is hitting everyone hard in Skagit County, that there is not enough available or affordable housing. And um, it, it is um, a particular problem in rural and isolated areas. So what difference does it make for people in rural areas to get that one free meal a day? Like um, how, how important is this? It's huge, critical. huge, because yeah. that's their, our meals are nutritious. There's a vegetable, a fruit. I mean, Tara's a wizard behind all of our amazing foods. And, and most of them are enough calories for a whole daily amount of food. They get it. There's ahead, a full Tara. entree, like a full fresh salad bar, a full, everything's fresh and made from scratch. So every, there's a full entree, homemade dessert, full salad bar, fresh fruit, and it's every day. And for, like you were saying, many of those people um, that come, that is their only meal that they get the whole day. It's the, and like many of them are unhoused, so they don't have access to being able to cook, or even if they get food stamps, they don't have anywhere to store their food or they don't have like we're saying anywhere of preparing it or anything like that so we have people that I mean they come and that is their their only meal of the day and we have many seniors our seniors make up roughly half of the amount of our attend of our participants like since we started this we've served over 60,000 meals in the beginning and seniors have made up 29,500 and some 570 of those or something like that but yeah I'm looking at some um, data from our database here and it looks like um, in the last year or in maybe this is for 2022 8,158 meals were served to 422 unique participants so it sounds like you have folks who are regulars that drop by every day um, as well as folks who might just drop in when they need it. Um, tell right. us about why why the meal program is important beyond the nutrition. What are some of the other benefits to having the meal program? And I, I'm just going to stop for a moment and I'll ask the question again. First, I want to acknowledge that this is a partnership with Skagit County government, right? We've got the East County Resource Center is a front door to community action services and information and referral to other programs throughout Skagit County. Um, and then there's the Concrete Community Center, a second facility nearby. It used to be the Concrete Senior Center and the county commissioners heard from the community um, that they wanted that space utilized for more than just a senior center. So you continue, as you said, Tara, to be serving a large percentage of seniors but it is intergenerational. So I just wanted to set that scene for folks who might not have been um, uh, lucky enough to join you for lunch up in concrete. Um, so let's let's uh, um, address that question. What are some of the benefits beyond the nutrition of the senior meal or of the um, uh, concrete center meal program? Um, socialization, um, creating a sense of community. We have, um, because we have so many different types of people and age groups and ethnic you know backgrounds in different places where they are socially in the community we have you know there's it's so diverse that this is where people will come to pretty much if they need anything they just come they'll come to, to come to get lunch and that's either where they can make friends or they can if they have any kind of needs or other needs, like if they need help with their energy or their rent or their other kinds of um, their power bill or just so many different resources that we offer. It's a good bridge. Um, a lot of people, that's how they find out about also the things at the resource center is because, or other services that we offer is because somebody said, oh, well, I might not be able to help you with this, but we could at least go get lunch first and then we can think about it. And that's where they have like street outreach and they have other different different avenues to connecting other people to other different resources that community action offers. It's a great hub for that because, well, once people get full, they they are can compute things better and they're, you know, they can they're better at critical thinking and problem solving at that point. And so it's easier for them to so the meal program um, is important for the nutrition itself. 
um, which is key to people having that executive functioning and being able to make a plan, but they also are building relationships with one another and with you all as staff at the Resource Center or, or partners who provide programs at the Resource Center. So someone might come thinking, right. I'm going to get a nice meal and be able to sit down in a, a warm, friendly place for a little bit. But then they find out, oh, I can get help with paying my energy bill. I can and get medical or food stamps or signing up, taking showers on Tuesdays or all these. Tell us about that. How, why would there be showers at a meal program? What's that it, all about? Because every Tuesday we have um, the shower truck that's um, uh, been a volunteer program that just started coming recently in this last year. Um, that comes on Tuesdays and pulls up outside. So anybody, it's open to anybody and everybody and they can come and take a shower if they would like, which is also a critical part of being human. It's like, you know, it's one of those things, but that helps everybody, you know, feel better about themselves. And when you can feel better about yourself, it makes you, you know, it just changes your world, changes your day, inspires hope. You know, well, that is um, that is what community action does. We are here in part to inspire hope, and it sounds like you're doing that with some fabulous community partners who are bringing in some of these other resources. So for our partners who are on this call today, that's one of the actions that they can take is um, you have um, uh, street outreach programs, you've got partners bringing showers, you partner with the church on um, uh, um, medically assisted treatment. Um, and so if a, a partner organization wants to know, um, hey, is it possible that we could be doing outreach at the Concrete Meal Program um, or to partner with the East County Resource Center? Um, Stephanie, I'm gonna ask you to put your contact information in the chat so folks know how to get a hold of you. And that's one of the reasons that we're doing this is not just to let people know about those nutrition programs, but how they can partner with community actions programs. Um, well, I'm going to say thank you and move on because we've got um, several other really important food programs to chat with. Uh, Tara or Stephanie, is there anything else that you would like to say about the Concrete Meal Program um, or the impact it's having in the community? I think I think it has a great impact just because of the socialization and community that it provides and what it provides for our seniors who are at home by themselves most of the time. And, and a lot of them can't cook for themselves anymore. So it provides that socialization, that getting out of the house, community. We now have bingo down there, which is really cool. So they get to stay and play bingo. And it's, it's a huge thing when you're stuck at home or you don't, or, or you're homeless and you feel like a nobody and you come in there, you no longer feel that way. You're, you're an equal, you're cared about and, and we care how your day's going and we ask, you know, that's, that's a big thing to just know that someone does care. More than a meal program. I think we've got, I think we've got a new slogan for you. More than a meal program. Well, thank you so much. And um, we are going to talk a little bit more in a bit about um, other food resources for seniors. Tara, um, we we want to say thank you and, and let you go because we know that you've got a big lift to figure out what you've got in the pantry today <laughs> to whip into a fabulous meal. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, you guys. Well, next we're going to go to, and I'll, I should mention, um, we are going to have Q&A at the end. If you, if anybody who's participating on this call would like to ask a question, you can certainly put it in the chat now, and, and our staff will be watching that and try to answer it in real time. We'll also come back around to it, um, uh, Q&A towards the end, if anybody has, has questions for these fabulous community action staffers. Next, we're going to go to Hannah Pope. Um, who is going to tell us about, um, I'm going to share my screen here, another resource through Community Action um, at all of our resource centers and by phone is um, looking for food resources. Well, there are a bunch of words on here. It says SNAP, EBT, basic food, and food stamps. 
That's a, that's a lot of names for something that's basically the same thing. Um, Hannah, can you tell us what is SNAP? So SNAP is, stands for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Um, the reason we have so many names on there is because we want to make sure that it's accessible to as many clients as possible. And a lot of people know it by different names. Um, food stamps, basic food, EBT, SNAP are all names for the same program. Um, it's a federal program that assists individuals and families by providing a monthly stipend to buy food for eligible households. And we um, at Community Action help clients through the application process and help them work their way through the eligibility requirements. Well, I'm looking at some data here. And um, for the time period, we are looking at that. Uh, I see that throughout the county in all corners of Skagit County, Community Action has um, assisted with 58 applications, um, 443 document verification services, um, over 1,000 education and information services, 734 eligibility pre-screens. What does this mean? So I come to Community Action, or maybe I'm at that meal program in Concrete, and somebody says, oh, you need a meal here, um, or you came to Community Action asking for something else. Do you have EBT or basic food? Um, what what is that person? What 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 do you do for that person next? There's a few different things we can do. Um, an eligibility pre-screen is essentially asking a client if they have benefits, providing them the information on what it means to have SNAP benefits. Um, a lot of times what we see in that first number that you said, the 58, is 58 people were helped with their application through our agency, whether that's outreach, East County, our main Mount Vernon office, coordinated entry, they all can help with application assistance. So multiple staffers at Community Action were, are out there looking to see, um, basically this is what we call it Community Action and income support, right? We know that, that SNAP and these meal programs are important um, in and of themselves, but anytime we can inject just a little bit of money into that household, whatever income they do have can be going for other basic needs. So um, food, housing, and basic needs, we're looking at what all can we surround this household with to help their income go further? So I'm gonna ask about, I'm gonna show eligibility on here, Hannah, and then I'd also like you to tell us, what does that mean? If somebody is eligible, what do they get? So this is on um, the uh, Community Action website, you see that? Yes. All right. So, um, these income limits are based on the 200% federal poverty level. So you have to be at or below that to qualify. And then on the left hand side, you'll see household size. So depending on how many household members you have, the income limit will go up. And that kind of is congruent with how much they will get in benefits if they are qualified and go through the application process, it'll go up per household member as well. And I believe the minimum right now is about $200 for just a single individual. Um, and then it goes up by, I believe, $82 per additional household member. And that's per month of a benefit. Yes. yes. So what kind of a difference does this make in someone's life? Can you share a story without sharing any confidential information about someone? Like, how big of a deal is it to, to be able to get EBT? It's a really big deal, especially for people who have children in the household and individuals. Sometimes people, they come in, their only source of income is ABD, and that's $197 a month. And that is not enough to sustain clients. And a lot of those clients are unhoused. And so they don't, like Tara and Stephanie were saying, they don't have anywhere to store their food. They don't have anywhere to cook their food. And so that money goes fast because they're going to buy non-perishable items more frequently than if they were buying larger grocery halls as most of the house population in the county does. And so it really makes a big difference in making sure that they have access to food and being able to kind of stretch their other money a little bit further. Well, I'm going to share my screen again. And um, 
you now have this beautiful flyer that's in both English and in Spanish. Um, and you can put your contact information in the chat as well, Hannah, if partners want to reach out. Um, so you, you and our other staff are here and can help folks with those applications, screen them and get that important resource into that um, into the household. And of course, this is in partnership with the Department of Social and Health Services. Any other partners you want to shout out and acknowledge at this time? Um, our grantor is actually within reach. And so they provide all of the information and the data, and they provide us with the money that we use to be able to provide this education to clients and provide us with access to the system to be able to apply for clients. And so that's a huge part of making this work. And they're basically what keeps the program going. Well, all right, Hannah, thank you for all that you do. I know um, that's just one small part of, of your job at Community Action. Thanks for everything you're doing to stabilize lives and help equip the people we serve to get ahead on their goals. Uh, next, we're going to go to our Women, Infant, and Children program. Wendy Dahlstead is the WIC program manager, and um, I see that and I, I understand that WIC is one of the what we call kind of um, front door services at Community Action because of the high numbers of people who utilize WIC. But there are a lot of people who would qualify for WIC in Skagit County who aren't receiving it yet. So we'll just start out um, by celebrating. It looks like we've served um, over 2,500 households were served with WIC in, in the last year, um, which which includes um, nutrition education, uh, breastfeeding, peer, peer support, as well as um, money for nutritious foods. So tell us a little bit about who qualifies, um, who is WIC for, Wendy? WIC is for um, young families, pregnant women, um, breastfeeding, infants and children, just like the acronym says. It doesn't mean that men can't participate. Um, men, the clients are the women, infants, and children, but the men are often the caregivers or grandfathers or um, foster families. So it's the child who's the client. And um, we will help anybody to get on to WIC if they're taking care of a child. So regardless of um, paperwork, that they have, if the child was left with them, we will help them take care of that child. And the food benefits have gone up in the last um, couple of years, which is wonderful. Hopefully Congress keeps them going with, um, so it's around $150 per participant. And a big chunk of that is fruits and vegetables. Plus they do are, uh, eligible for farmer's market. We have $20,000 this year, and we are going to give that out to our WIC families to use at the farmer's market um, here in Skagit County. With a, in an electric fashion, they're going to have a, a QR code for using those benefits. No more paper. And accessing WIC has gotten easier. Um, one, one of the um, strange benefits of the pandemic. Um, can you tell us how, how do people access WIC um, the first time or on an ongoing basis? Um, mostly people have heard about WIC. It's been around for nearly 50 years. And um, they either come to the door or they give us a call. We have our own phone number. And it, the website is great because all that information is on the website, including an email that they can um, use to contact us. We are still one of the programs that is doing most of our appointments remotely. So our families are able to stay at home and talk to us on the phone, complete their appointments on the phone, get their benefits issued on the phone and um, then go to the store when it's convenient for them, if that's late in the night, um, which often works out for families with young children, they can go then. So we were talking about community needs and that food insecurity is higher in Skagit County than in other parts of Washington and higher than the national average. 
um, I, I heard a statistic that over half the babies born in Skagit County would qualify for WIC. Is that right? Over half the babies born do qualify for WIC. If the uh, mom, the parents are on Apple Health, the babies qualify automatically. That's an indicator of reasonably low income. Um, usually around the time that a baby's born, the family is at a fairly low income status. Um, they're just starting out with their working lives. They might be in college. Um, and certainly we have our share of our WIC participants that are also homeless or living in cars. So it, it really, there's quite a range of need in, among a population, but they all need nutritious food. And just like Tara was saying, it does bring them in to get a wide range of services. So WIC is more than just the WIC vouchers. Um, it, it is a wraparound program as well. What other, um, the, the federal program provides the food, but community action helps subsidize a lot of those other needs that families have. Can you tell us um, what, is, what is a family's experience at WIC um, in addition to the food benefit? What else do they get through WIC? Um, we have, for a long time, five, six years, we've been able to provide diapers, not a full supply, but at least a supplement for diapers. And um, we have a caseworker who can go visit our work families and help them with things like filling out the basic food application or other applications, getting, helping to get the kids into Head Start. Um, there's... Accessing things is sort of complicated, especially if you have a low literacy level or you don't really know about um, all the services. So it's wonderful that United Way does give us a small grant to pay for um, our home visitor. And um, two, two questions in the chat. Can people participate in WIC if they're already receiving SNAP? Yes. And in fact, that's one of the takeaways today is there are all of these food resources. Um, and in fact, we're going to hear about a senior program in a, in a minute and a senior might be a custodial grandparent and they could qualify for SNAP and WIC and the senior food box program and go get lunch at the Concrete Community Center. Um, and another question here is, uh, does Skagit County um, does does Community Actions WIC program use paper vouchers or the newer card system? We are now on a card for the last three years. So um, it is a little complicated. Everything about WIC is a little complicated, but it is wonderful at the store. You just swipe your card. Um, the card does still have specific foods on it, which is partly why it's complicated. Um, it's not like the food stamp card that you can buy anything you have to buy the designated foods. And is there anything else that you'd like um, folks to know about the WIC program, um, Wendy? Well, like you were mentioning, more people out there are eligible than we are providing services to right now. So it's good to refer folks in and see if we can't get them on the program. Um, we provide so many services on breastfeeding and um, that's not something you can necessarily get other places. Plus on feeding infants and children, which again, you don't necessarily get any place else. So the more um, folks that are able to benefit from WIC, the better. Uh, another question, how old do the children have to be to qualify? The services stop at age five. So it's prenatal through age five. Right, so pregnancy through age five. And, and also I just mentioning, we don't ask about immigration status or anything like that. Thank you, Wendy. And, and that's an important question that often comes up. What languages does your WIC program provide services in? We do have staff here that speak Spanish. Uh, about half of our sp staff are bilingual in Spanish. We do have one staff member who speaks Mesteco, and we have a staff member that speaks Ukrainian. So we have had quite a number of Ukrainian participants join in the last year or so 
for um, reasons that they had to immigrate quickly to the United States. Well, thank you, Wendy. And we're going to uh, move on and hear from Madeline from our Skagit Food Distribution Center. Um, if, if folks still have questions for Wendy, do put them in the chat and we'll get to those. Okay. Um, thank but, you. Yeah, thank you, Wendy. Madeline, um, welcome. Um, the Skagit Food Distribution Center is different. We have you last because it's kind of different than a lot of the programs we've heard of, which are what we call client facing programs, um, direct services that provide food directly to families and households. Um, what is the Skagit Food Distribution Center and how is it different than what people think of as a food bank? Um, yeah, so it's different. Um, yeah, like you said, Liz, we don't do any direct client service besides Lori's senior box program, and she's going to talk about that next. Um, but the Food Distribution Center is basically an aggregation and distribution hub that serves all the food banks and pantries um, in the county. So what that means is we receive large shipments and have the capacity to receive large shipments and break them down and distribute them to the food banks. So this, there's a, a photo here. Can you see this on the website? Yep. So this is a photo of the food distribution center and it has dry storage and cold storage. Um, it has freezers and refrigerators. You can drive those um, hand trucks into uh, forklifts um, coming and going, <laughs> that type of thing. So um, the food comes in and then it's from bulk providers. So that's what we've been talking about, like Northwest Harvest and Food Lifeline. So big semi loads of food come into the food distribution center. Um, and then we do have purchasing programs with local farmers to get nutritious local produce into the food distribution center. But um, it's just in and out. This isn't a long term storage area. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, so we not only have the infrastructure capacity to receive these orders and distribute them, um, but we also, you know, have the the people power that a lot of food banks that are, you know, only have one or two staff members or mostly volunteer um, run don't always have the the same people power that that we do to receive and, and break down shipments. Um, yeah, and that's correct. We really don't store product um, much longer than a week or two. The um, We have a large new freezer, which is great because it does increase our capacity to store some products longer term for food banks, um, which is especially important because a lot of food banks don't have much freezer storage or any freezer storage. Um, and same and thing fact, with cooler. I, I understand in a lot of places, yeah. um, they're, they're called food pantries because it mm -hmm. really is sometimes just a closet in a church Mm -hmm. And they they might have a refrigerator, but not not enough to 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 hold milk and proteins and things like that longer term. So, can you just tell us what is this language? Food pantry, food bank, food distribution center. What which is which? Yeah, definitely. So, um, so we're a food distribution center, and that means we're receiving food and distributing it to food banks and food pantries, and we're not doing any direct client distribution. Um, a food bank is an organization that actually will distribute some food product to other food pantries. In addition, they do serve clients directly. Um, and so food banks tend to have a little bit more storage and storage capacity um, than a food pantry, which is just doing um, direct service to clients. Well, tell us about um, the, the, the Skagit Food Distribution Center's clientele. We've got this great infographic that our coworkers, Emily and Isabella, worked out. Um, so there are um, 18 or 19 food pantries, food banks, and meal programs that are um, partners. Can you talk a little bit about that network and the partnership and, and the geographic reach of the Skagit Food Distribution Center? Yeah, so um, yeah, we're serving all the food banks and food pantries in Skagit in addition to um, three meal programs. And then we also serve um, the San Juan County and Island County and some food banks and pantries on the Island and Snohomish counties as well. Um, so definitely a, a wide range. And so they usually bring their trucks. You get the big shipment in 
and then mm-hmm. repalletize it. So one ask is, hey, we need volunteers to help take these large food shipments. And then you've got your 18 or 19 um, pallets on the ground um, and in the refrigerator, in the dry storage areas. And it, it, our team has gone out there for a service day and we're humping bags of potatoes and bags of onions. So one food pantry might get three bags of onions and another food pantry gets six bags of onions. And, and build, you build pallets for these food banks and then they bring their own trucks and pick them up or you take the food to them? Yeah, so um, most of the food banks do, food banks and food pantries do pick up. Um, we're doing some deliveries to the smaller ones who don't have the capacity to come pick up. Um, and then in addition to get product out to the San Juans, we've been partnering with the Puget Sound Food Hub um, to cross dock and deliver those pallets as well. So. Um, on Wednesdays, we're a recipient of the We Feed Washington boxes that the Puget Sound Food Hub um, packs. So those are fresh local produce boxes um, that they purchase the product from local farms and pack the boxes and then deliver those to us to distribute. So the Puget Sound Food Hub deliver the, delivers those boxes and then takes back um, pallets that will be delivered to the islands. Um, and we've got a question from uh, Jamie, a fabulous volunteer with our Skagit Vets Connect program, and she's asking, would you say that food banks that don't have much refrigeration have the ability to hold more food if they did have more f- refrigeration capacity or if they had more refrigerators? And I think what this is bringing up is that um, we started, Community Action started the Food Distribution Center to build that capacity for our partners. Um, Community Actions Food Distribution Center exists 100% to benefit food bank customers and those food banks that we partner with, right? And so that's the reason that we um, have gotten some grants to get more refrigeration capacity, more freezer capacity. Um, thank you, PSE, for um, you know the backup generator. Um, and and, and the Food Distribution Center does that in other ways as well. And I'm wondering, um, I know you haven't been at the Food Distribution Center a, a super long time, Madeline, but can you speak to, to the importance of some of that capacity building and some of the projects that we've done? Yeah, I mean, we definitely, the, the amount of storage that we have is a huge help to, to food banks. And for the most part, we're able to store as much as they need for kind of however long as they need. Um, I will say like most food banks um, also are not storing that much product, A, because of space limitations, but B, um, there isn't really an abundance of food coming through our doors and their doors right now. And so most food banks, um, whatever we receive in for them that week, they're sending out on their distribution day immediately. So so we find that we're not holding on to stuff for very long and neither are the food banks or pantries. but we do have the capacity to store things um, as they need. And yeah, we're definitely working with the food banks and you know trying our best to increase their capacity, um, whether that's like with infrastructure, training programs and food safety and just like general warehouse um, management, just a lot of things that we have the capacity for and can share with them, so. Thanks, and um, we we did have a, a nice comment from Lilia and Jose at Tri Parish Food Bank, um, and I know that we've we've worked on special projects with food banks in the past. We do get questions sometimes. Um, so number one, the food distribution center is not a public facing food bank, so do not send customers to the the food distribution center in um, Cedar Woolley, um, and we generally encourage when we have folks that contact us and say, hey, we'd like to do a food drive. We say, that's great. Um, Please benefit your neighborhood food bank and let us um, direct you to one of those food banks. Because generally those smaller scale food drives with a variety of items are more difficult for the food distribution center to process um, because we usually deal in the large quantities that we can split up among multiple food banks. So how can people help if they want to help the food distribution center? What, what are ways that they can be engaged? Yeah, I mean, I think definitely you mentioned volunteering at one point. So we always need volunteers to either help in the warehouse and breaking down large shipments or helping do um, deliveries for Lori's program, the senior box program that she's going to talk about. 
And um, yeah, I mean, we obviously love seeing food come through the door that we can distribute to food banks, but really um, we have the most power when we're receiving or purchasing large shipments. And that allows us to um, distribute as much as we can to the food bank. So smaller food drives, you know, we, we would love to, you know, direct more to the food banks and pantries and they can take those smaller quantities of things. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't say that um, those cash donations are welcome so that you can do that purchasing. So you yes. mentioned the food shortage and there was a question about this. Um, we have been seeking out uh, grants and donations so, to be able to do those larger types of purchasing. And we did receive a, a bump, an additional bump from thank you to our state legislators who helped pass the emergency um, food bill that um, got us more funding through the Washington State Department of Agriculture for food purchasing. So very briefly, and then we'll turn to Lori. Madeline, can you just comment on what is this food shortage and how is the Skagit Food Distribution Center trying to work with our partners on that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like you said, I'm still new to the distribution center, so I don't have a ton of context, but um, the biggest thing has been talking to the food banks and hearing um, you know, that their shortages or what they need. And we're really trying to work with them and figure out what they need and where we can purchase it if we're not getting it elsewhere. So um, yeah, we have a few grants right now and we're doing, uh, we have a lot of local purchasing plan for the upcoming season. So we have a local food purchasing agreement through the WSDA, um, a resiliency grant for some purchasing. Um, and Farm to Food Pantry is another grant that we've received in the past to buy local um, fruit and veg from the area, and as well as that um, WSDA emergency food assistance program money. And so, yeah, so we're really trying to use our purchasing power again, like I said, to um, kind of purchase product at wholesale quantity and, and price to distribute. And, and that was a question, um, do the local farmers give you discounted purchases? And the point is, is that when we've got the cash, we can buy at the wholesale rate. And, and so the food distribution center is not only benefiting food bank and food, food pantry households, the, the customers of those um, food food banks, we're also helping to support the local agriculture community. And over the years, what we've seen is we might spend, you know, let's just say $30,000 on food purchasing. Um, and over time, that leverages lots of donations from farmers because we build those relationships with farmers. We contract with them to buy culturally appropriate foods, foods that people want to eat, um, that, that food bank customers will use. Um, and uh, because of those relationships, when the farmers have too much product or a tariff goes into effect, um, maybe in a Chinese market, um, those, those farmers know that they can donate their excess goods to the food distribution center and it'll be put to good use. So thank you, Madeline. I'm gonna turn next to Lori Burgerstock. Um, and you've got a program with a funny name of acronyms and all of our friends at Community Action call it the Senior Food Box Program. So Lori, tell us what is the Senior Food Box Program? Well, it's actually called Commodity Supplemental Food Program, but I like to say it's Commodity Senior Food Program because it is only for seniors 60 years of age and older. Um, so this program started in 2016 and up to date, I have served over 700 seniors. Doesn't sound like a lot because I know there's a lot more seniors out there. Um, but uh, the, quali the qualifications have changed just recently. So one person, they could have a monthly income of 1,580 and two people could be 2,137 coming in and still be able to get the senior food program. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect if you have SNAP, it doesn't affect if you have any other uh, programs going on. This is separate in itself. You don't need a social security number. So, you know, we don't care about that. Uh, I have help with, uh, from uh, Mariana in our uh, senior and disabled program who does the communication with the Hispanic, Hispanic uh, population that we've just started to uh, grow again. We 
always have trouble finding somebody that can speak the language. Uh, none of us here at the senior or at the food distribution center know any Spanish. So I don't know if I could even learn that, but um, I love the program. Uh, we, uh, we can deliver to uh, you even if you live in a motel or you're in a car or you're in a tent. If, you, if you're in the area, it's all of Skagit County. We go all the way to Alger, all the way to Concrete and all the way to Anacortes and La Conner. We also are, are doing that. And that uh, I'd like to increase the program. So we're looking for more uh, seniors out there. And so we did a new flyer. And with that flyer in the past uh, week, I have got 15 new seniors. So the flyer is really working. And then uh, I got a surprise phone call and I, the Swinomish tribal community reached out to me to start a program for their elders. They have a program right now, but they're going to use us solely for their seniors. So I'm really excited about this and we're going to do a presentation and uh, sign up uh, the elders that are interested in the program. And that's going to happen shortly. Um, we're trying to uh, get it all together so we can have them started by June. So well, that's really exciting, Lori. Um, and so these these seniors, um, you you keep saying we, and I know that I know. It's, not a, it's not Lori driving these trucks from one side of the county no. to the other. Um, who who is your team there? My team is growing. We have a lot new a lot of new volunteers that have come to the program. Uh, they do the box building. They deliver to, we have 14 different routes that uh, I constantly update with new people. And um, the volunteers that we've had, we've had some volunteers that have been with us from the beginning. And, and some of the seniors have been with me from the beginning. So this is going on seven years. And the program, the program keeps changing. And I like the way it's going. And I like the way that we're getting more people involved. And uh, we have organizations that are wanting to come and do the box building and to volunteer. And it's really, it, it's, it's starting to be great to uh, have all this interaction. And the seniors love our volunteers. They, they get a chance to, to meet them and to talk with them. Uh, we had two new volunteers that went and did the Lacana route and they were gone for seven hours. And we're like panicking, go, what's happening? Nobody, nobody has ever taken that long. And I asked them what happened and they said, we were just talking to everybody. We would so just stop and talk. So again, um, like the meal program in concrete, it's more than a meal program. It's more than a box of food. It's it's giving people connection to the community. It's giving them hope. Um, mm -hmm. It's good for the volunteers. Um, we only have a few minutes left and I do wanna make sure we've got time for, for any um, questions. Anything else that you'd like to briefly add about the senior food box program, Lori? It's, I love the program. I love the people that I work with. Um, I, I'm really, I'm really happy and and we have a lot of wonderful seniors out there that I have made a connection with and it's it's the best job I get to talk on the phone <laughs> and and during the pandemic we had a lot of uh, seniors that I got involved with and and I'm really I really love my job. Well, thank you. And someone's asking, where can one sign up for the Senior Food Box program? Um, I'm gonna ask Isabella or Josh to throw the um, URL in there again. And we do have the flyers um, for these programs that we can send out along with um, uh, the link to this program, to this workshop in, in a few days. We'll send that, that out. Um, 
So we are at, we are getting comments and questions um, asking for these flyers. So yes, we will follow up with you and make sure that you all get um, these flyers. And thank you. That is one of the asks today um, for these client facing programs. Please do uh, uh, tell people about them. Um, we know that more people would qualify for WIC than have applied. Uh, folks will uh, in East County can benefit from the meal program. Um, Lori Senior Food Box program is expanding. Um, and of course, basic food. So information and referral is one ask. Um, as you can um, tell, a number of these programs rely on volunteers. I'm going to ask Tracy Monteron on our staff to wave. Maybe take yourself off mute and say hello, Tracy. Hi. We can't hear you. I'm going to ask. Isabel Tracy here? yelled through the door that her mic isn't working right now. OK, <laughs> go team, go. Um, Isabella or Josh, can you put the volunteer center email address in the chat as well in case there are any um, individuals or uh, employee staff teams that would like a, a team building project? You can get a hold of Tracy at our volunteer center and learn how to volunteer once or ongoing with um, these fabulous food programs. And of course, community action, um, we take cash donations to help um, support these programs, some of which um, do have government grants and contracts involved, but almost none of which support themselves and community actions donors make a big difference. Um, in, we've got a question here from um, Liz. If a Spanish speaking community member is seeking assistance with electric bills, who can they reach out to at community action? Um, and I'm going to ask Isabella to put our energy assistance phone number and URL in there. Um, and Liz, um, we do have folks in, who use who have multiple languages in our energy assistance program as well as our WIC program. Of course, there is um, never a wrong call to Community Actions mainline. So, as a reminder, I'm going to show everyone our website communityactionskagit.org. You can go to I'm looking for help with energy and utility assistance is, is the web page there. And when in doubt, just scroll to the bottom of any of these pages and the telephone number will get you to one of our resource centers and they'll make sure you get to the right place. So you don't have to know which program you're looking for or which ones um, have which languages. You can call that number, use the language that is most comfortable for you, and our friendly service screeners will get you to where you need to go. Um, in the chat, uh, we've got our partners from Viva Farms. Um, one way to support our food distribution center and all these food programs is to support Viva Farms by buying their CSAs because Viva is one of the producers. Their their um, uh, farmer support program, their up and coming farmers, are are some of the farmers that we work with. And so, purchasing a CSA from Viva Farms Community Supported Agriculture is a great way to support the entire food system in Skagit County. Any questions for our teams um, or any any other comments? Um, you can take yourself off mute and and just ask away. We've got about two minutes left. Well, I just want to say thank you to all of our staff at Community Action and the partners and volunteers who make these programs um, possible. It's so good to see so many of you here today. Um, help us spread the word. And um, if you'd like to partner with any of these programs or talk about what that might look like, please do reach out. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks Thank for coming to the brunch and learn with community action.